Hey! It's time for my favorite video of the year where I tell you all my favorite books. Out of the 86 that I've read so far in 2023, I'm hopefully gonna hit 90 before the end of the year. But these were my favorite. These were the best of the best, the ones that I recommend to people, the ones I've probably made my friends in real life read, and ones that if you were to DM me on Instagram like you usually do and ask for a book recommendation, I'd probably give you one of these. <laughs> Which I love when you guys do that, don't get me wrong. But I would just reference this video. Here we go. Okay, let's just dive right in. This is a trilogy that I read, and I think that even if you have never read this genre before, you should give this one a try. Because admittedly, it's actually the only adult sci-fi book I think I've ever read, but that is the Red Rising trilogy. There are books after this trilogy that are considered a continuation of this one, but also you can just read these three books and it's completed. And the first book, Red Rising by Pierce Brown, is very beat up because I made one of my friends read this book and they took it to the beach, apparently. I always just try to convince people to read even the first chapter of this book because it will build you up and tear you down so quickly. <laughs> and I've heard people say that this series reads more like a fantasy book, and this one is even compared to The Hunger Games, just a much more confusing Hunger Games. I do agree, it does kind of read like a fantasy series. Does it take a little bit more brain power? Sure. Is it worth that brain power? In my opinion, 100%. It's so worth it, like top reading experience that I've had almost ever. My reactions to these books were insane. I couldn't believe it. I forgot that I was even reading a book. Time just went away. Time was not a concept while reading these books. And it's just rare to experience that. So read this trilogy. Next, we have a book that is very popular and I feel like it's kind of this cycle where it becomes people's favorite book of 2022. So then a bunch of other people read it in 2023 and then it becomes our favorite books of 2023 and the cycle continues. But that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This is a literary fiction book that blew up. I never really read literary fiction before this year. So I just assumed that this would be super boring to me. It's also described as these two friends who are building a video game together. So I was like, what does that even mean? I have no interest in that. It's only like 400 something pages and it feels like a thousand pages because of how much information that you get. But it is a story of friendship, of love never realized. <laughs> and it's genius. I just think Gabrielle Zevin's writing is so unique and it's not something that you can just get more of in the world. It only comes from her, which is just amazing. I wish I could write like her. And at first I gave this book like four stars and I don't understand what my thinking was at that point other than maybe it's a kind of a longer book to get through, but it left such a lasting impact that I continue to think about this book for the entire year. No matter what book I read, this one stood out in my mind as a unique story. And when I would flip back through the back of the book and read certain quotes from it, it would just bring me right back to that reading experience. And I love this book so much. It's definitely not a happy book, but it is definitely one worth reading. And then much later in the year, I picked up another book by Gabrielle Zevin, which is The Storied Life of AJ Fickery. This is also one of those books that had a kind of vague synopsis about a man working at a bookshop and a big twist happened happening in his life. That's just the kind of synopsis that makes no sense to me and makes me put off reading a book for a really long time. But then when I finally picked it up, it is so much better than I could have ever dreamed of. It has romance, it has a plot twist, it pulls at your heartstrings, it makes you cry, it makes you gasp, it's funny. Above all, you just need to read Gabrielle Zevin's writing for once in your life because I think you'll really enjoy it, even if you can't really put your finger on why. I've just never read writing like this and I'm obsessed. This one's also really short, so opposite reading experience of this one. So if you're a little bit nervous about going into this genre or this author, I would start with this one because it's like a little bit over 200 pages. And there's a movie. So if you feel like you had no idea what's going on, which that shouldn't happen, it's a very easy book to understand, I think, you can just watch the movie. And that was also fun too. Okay, just took a little Chipotle break, I'm back. This next book was so good, I feel like I watched it. And if you read books, you probably know what I mean. The fact that this is not a TV show and that I only read this with my eyeballs is insane because it just came alive right off the day. <laughs> no, but it, it actually did. And that is Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh, wow. This is about a tennis player who is already a world champion, but she retires and then someone else is about to take over her world record. And so she's older now, but she wants to come out and reclaim it. And the reason this book is so good is because her personality is unlike any protagonist I've ever read about. She's extremely cocky, does not care what anyone thinks. And anything you think a character will say, she says the exact opposite. It had my mouth dropping and laughing out loud multiple times during the reading of this book. And then it also had me crying a tear or two towards the end. So it does make you want to put on your little tennis skirt and find the nearest tennis court after reading it, which is also very fun. This next book I like particularly on audio because Meryl Streep narrates it. Great actress, perfect voice for this book. And it is perfect because I'm actually partnering with Spotify to make this video. If you do not have Spotify premium, you are going to want to get it immediately because they just upped the value of having it so much more. They've added over 200,000 audiobooks for
for free if you already have premium. So here's the book that I'm referencing that I really liked. It's called Tom Lake. And right here in green, it says included in premium, which means I would have to do nothing. I just click play. Don't have to purchase the thing. I can just listen to it. And I've done that with countless books. I've yet to find a book that I've wanted to read that is not included on premium. I think it's actually like the craziest thing to ever happen for people who read books, people who don't read books, who want to get into it and want to listen to books on your way to work. It is genuinely the most worth it thing in the world. And if you don't know what to listen to, I highly recommend Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. This is another literary fiction book, which is shocking for me, but it's great on audio because it's a mom telling the story of her life, becoming an actress, going to Hollywood and dating these famous actors. And she's telling it to her three daughters when they come home to help her on the farm and quarantine together, which that is not that much part of the story. It's just kind of like the background setting, but it's mostly the narration from the mom, which is why Meryl Streep talk in my ear telling me the story made me feel like I was one of the daughters listening to my mom who became a famous actress and then gave it up to live on a little cherry farm. It's heartwarming and entertaining and I got a lot of laundry done while listening to this book. <laughs> Next up, we have Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. This is a fun, lighthearted, romantic comedy and I just love this author. She writes the most fast paced books I've ever read in my entire life. I will pick hers up thinking I'm just gonna read a chapter and before I know it, I'm halfway through the book. This one follows a character who gets hit by a car in the first chapter of the book and then has facial blindness where she can't recognize a face and she's already entered into this competition to draw a portrait. That's gonna create some conflict if you can only imagine. I captured my reaction towards the end of this book in this video and I highly recommend watching it because one of the biggest reactions I've had to a book this entire year was this one. So if you want a fun time, I highly recommend. This is another book that will probably give you very big jaw-dropping reactions and it's a thriller book. None of this is true by Lisa Jewell. This is her new release of 2023. She has tons of thriller books and I've read another one of them and absolutely hated it. And this one I absolutely love. So I guess that's a testament to giving authors second chances if you haven't liked one of their books previously. But this one is so interesting. It follows two women who have the same birthday and they meet each other at a restaurant when they're celebrating their birthdays. One of them has a very successful podcast where she interviews other successful women. And this other character feels like she is living a life that she is trapped in and wants to break free of. And she can convinces successful podcast lady to start documenting her life because she's about to make a very big change. So you start off with that and then you have an alternating timeline where it shows you these like transcripts from a Netflix special made about these two girls' lives. So clearly something sinister happened for Netflix to do a special on them. And you just start following these two women, secrets come out, things get weirder and weirder and weirder. And the second you think you're starting to understand, you actually don't. And I loved it. This is my favorite thriller of the year by far. Okay, this next book is a little bit obvious because it's basically basically the Super Bowl for me every time that Emily Henry comes out with a new book. This was not my favorite book by her, but I definitely gave it an auto five stars and I thought I would just mention it. I mean, every time her book comes out, like in the summertime, it's the best two days of my life. And then it's over so quickly, I kind of forgot everything that happens, which means I get to read it again. <laughs> I'm going to mention this series quickly. I made an entire video out of it if you want to go watch that. And that is The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. But in particular, Crown of Midnight, second book, Queen of Shadows, and Empire of Storms were my favorite books from the series. Fantasy romance. If you haven't heard of it, that's shocking. I loved it. I'm just like everybody else. This next book is shockingly, I think one of my favorites of the entire year. And not because the book is groundbreaking, but I love a good heartwarming, cozy, romantic, lighthearted fun time. And this book did that for me perfectly. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Poston. When I saw that this book got released, I saw it on the shelf and I said, I'm never reading that book, looks boring. And then my friend Destiny read it and gave it almost five stars. And I was like, okay, that's pretty shocking. I guess I should read this book. It's about this apartment in New York City that can travel back seven years into the past. So it's a bit of magical realism. It's not gonna get into the nitty gritty of how this is possible. It's just a thing that it does and you're never gonna get an explanation for that. It's just supposed to be whimsical and fun. But when this apartment travels seven years into the past, there's someone else living there, a certain man. And this man is just a golden retriever. His heart is sunshine. And her name is Clementine. Does that make any sense? No, but I love that name. And every single word choice made in this book makes it so sunny and bright and happy and just sweet and cute and heart-wrenching. I don't know, I feel like this book is easy to miss the beauty of. It was one of those books where I wanted to read it slow to just really enjoy every word that she chose. It just gives you that like heart clench feeling. I love this book so much. It's not anything groundbreaking. Like I said, if you just want a sweet, wholesome, fun, magical realism, romantic time, pick up this book for sure. It's also the most unique romance book I've read in two years probably so. Hello. If you're a man watching this video, you'll probably enjoy my next three book recommendations. <laughs> Listen, 
I know my demographic, okay? There's not many of you, but I'm talking to the girlies as well, okay? Billy Summers by Stephen King was my first Stephen King book ever, and that is because it is not horror, because I am scared of that genre. This one follows a, what do they call him, an assassin? It follows this man who uh, gets paid to kill people, but he's taking his last assignment ever. That's all fun and well until 200 pages into the book when you meet a new character, and the book becomes something completely different that you don't get told on the back of the book. So I'm not gonna tell you either. This book is graphic, so look into some trigger warnings because it's not for the faint of heart. It's definitely for an older audience, but the subtleties and how Stephen King shows you what a character is feeling rather than telling you, I think is genius. And it made me obsessed with him. I continued to watch hours and hours of content of interviews with him on YouTube, which he tells mostly the same stories in every interview. So now I know all of them. And I was crying at the end of this book. It's so good. If you've never read a Stephen King book, don't like horror, I highly recommend this one, which led me to read his memoir on writing. It's not only a memoir, like the first hundred pages goes through his life, but then it becomes his tips for writing. And he goes very in depth with things as simple as like, he hates words that end with L-Y. So every time I read a book that has an adverb, I think about Stephen King hating it. So that kind of ruined a lot for me. I feel like you would really be inspired by this book, even if you're not going to be a writer. If you make YouTube videos or if you write screenplays or I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that's not specifically writing a book. I think it's inspiring in general and will kind of kickstart whatever project that you've been putting off for a while because it definitely did that for me. I think this book is a gem. It's crazy how much value he puts into it. I feel like he could put this into like a masterclass and charge so much money for it and so many Stephen King fans would buy it, but instead he gives us this book. It's a very generous book in my opinion. Last Stephen King book I'm going to be talking about is 112263. There's no way I can read this massive book and not brag about the fact that I read this massive book. That's like half the fun of reading long books. The thing about it though is that it didn't even feel that long. It felt, well, the middle felt a little bit long. I won't lie about that, but it was amazing and very worth it. And it has time travel involved in it, which makes it very fun and very weird at the end. The subject matter is very sad. The premise is basically if you could go back and try to stop the JFK assassination, how would that work? Could you make it happen? And would you do it? And there's a little bit of romance in here. I'm gonna start tearing up. Highly recommend you read Stephen King if you've never read him before. And two quick honorable mentions. If you are of the younger demographic, I think you would love this book. It's very angsty. This is a young adult romance book and it is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. The writing in this one is very simple, almost poetic. It's very emotional and it's very angsty. And this made me feel like I was in high school again while reading it, but I loved it a lot. And then The Stolen Air by Holly Black because I love every single fairy tale, whimsical book that she ever writes. This comes after the Cruel Prince trilogy, but I do believe you could read it by itself if you really wanted to. And I just remember why I love reading whenever I read one of her books. So if you like fantasy, I highly recommend this one. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this because I'm listening to it right now. And I have four hours of it left, which feels a little bit premature, but I've loved every second of it so far. And that is Finding Me by Viola Davis. It's her memoir. I think this is a must listen. She actually narrates the book. And this audiobook is the 2023 winner of the Grammy for best audiobook narration and storytelling recording. So another other words, if you've never listened to an audiobook before, this is the one that you need to listen to. It was free on Spotify Premium. It is graphic because she's telling the truth about her life, but it is also inspiring, eye-opening, and it makes me want to watch every movie that she's in and read more memoirs. So yeah, those are my favorite books of 2023. Let me know what your favorite book of the year was. I'm so excited to keep reading, and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed too, because it's just the best, best little thing on the internet I've ever experienced. Okay, love ya. See you somewhere else on the internet. <laughs>